Hi everyone, it's Molly Eric. This weekend, it's the parable of the wedding feast. So basically, there's this king. He's inviting different people to attend the wedding of his son. So it's a wedding feast. And people give the excuse that they're busy. One guy says, for example, I'm busy with my farm. Another guy says he's busy with his business. And when the king persists in inviting these people to the wedding, they don't just send back the RSVP card checked off. No, they actually beat and then ultimately kill the messengers, which seems to be a bit of an overreaction. And so it kind of begs the question, like, why are they so enraged? Well, the risk of oversimplifying it, in a certain sense, they're enraged because they're being invited to come away from their busyness. Which speaks to the fact that they're not just busy, but in a certain sense, they need to be busy. They need to be busy because this is what gives them a sense of value and purpose and, and all these different things, right? And for me, one of the best examples to illustrate this particular point is found in this testimony of Matt Fratt, right? And so basically he was on the Restore to Glory podcast and he was giving this testimony, his own personal testimony about his own kind of ongoing struggle with sin, right? Just basically his testimony about being human. And as the story goes, he was in prayer. I think he was before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And all of a sudden he started thanking the Lord for his personal struggles. And so just to kind of paraphrase, basically what he was saying was, you know, thank you, Lord, that I'm selfish. Thank you for my egotism. Thank you for even my inclination to watch porn, right? And at the time, he thought perhaps he was being heretical, but he knew he was saying something true and authentic. And then that weekend, he went to Mass, and he heard about how St. Paul says that he boasts in his weakness, in response to which Mad Fred said, well, I'm sure that's basically what I meant, right? And then he concluded by saying that all these different struggles that we have, basically this ongoing struggle, not only teaches us humility, but in a certain sense, opens up these caverns in our hearts that are filled with the Holy Spirit and help us ultimately to break down this facade that we tend to put in front of other people, hoping that they'll accept us. So should we come to realize that we were acceptable all along? Now, bring it back to the parable, it's kind of interesting. This particular point is illuminated in a really powerful sort of way by a very notable absence in the context of the story. So if you think about the story, there's the king, there's the son, obviously he's getting married, there's the invited guests. But again, a notable absence is the bride. And the reason why is because the bride is basically the guests themselves. And so they're not being invited to a wedding, they're being invited to their wedding. But more to the point, in the context of the parable, it's pretty clear that an important prerequisite to becoming espoused to God the Father through His only begotten Son, you need to let go of the sense that my value is tied to my efficiency and productivity, whether we're talking about in the material realm or the spiritual realm. But instead to realize, all this time I've always been seen and known and loved by my Father in Heaven. And once we fully embrace that particular identity, our identity in the Lord, then perhaps we might come to find the rest that we've always been searching for.